Hi everybody, Martha Joyce here. We're starting this week with um, some audio along with this lovely avatar so that we can record your lecture notes and perhaps explain things a little differently so that you get another opportunity to learn in a different way other than just reading text. What we're going to do right now is review notes from week one, chapter one, medical word elements. Your focus when you do your work this uh, for week one is actually on prefixes, but we're also doing an introduction to the medical word elements. You actually will uh, look at, over the next three weeks, word roots, combining forms, suffixes, and prefixes. Let's start with the word root. The word root is the most basic part of a word and it gives a word its fundamental meaning. The word root is connected to other word parts which in turn add more meaning to the word. Word roots are often connected to other word roots and or suffixes by using a combining vowel, which is often the letter O. The combining vowel has no meaning but it's merely a way to connect or hook together the word parts properly. Word roots are primarily derived from Greek or Latin origins. Here's an example of a word root, arthur, which means joint, that's A-R-T-H-R, and again it means joint. What is a combining form? A combining form is a word root plus a combining vowel, again, usually O. A combining form, um, such as the one we just gave you, Arthur, plus the letter O, um, is actually a word root plus a combining vowel. So in other words, it's a combining form, and it simply means joint. The O, again, it doesn't really mean anything, but it just helps to link the word root to other word parts. Next, let's move on to suffixes. A suffix is a word part that you'll find at the end of a word root. A suffix is always at the end of a word. Suffixes are added and change the meaning of the word because a suffix actually conveys meaning. Suffixes typically signify a procedure, a disease, a condition, or a part of speech when you're considering medical terminology. Some examples include denia, which means pain, algia, which also means pain, itis, which means inflammation, and tripsy, which means crushing. Note that when suffixes are written by themselves in the study of medical terminology, the suffixes are written with a dash immediately before them. This is how you'll be expected to write suffixes in your activities and graded work in this class. There's no space between the dash and the suffix. Next, let's move on to prefixes. A prefix is a part of a word that's added to the beginning of a word root. Prefixes may or may not be present within a word. In other words, not all words have prefixes. If a prefix is present in a medical word, it's usually um, going to signify a number time, position, direction, or negation. Note that when prefixes are written by themselves in the study of medical terminology, you're going to put a dash immediately after the prefix. There's no space there. So um, if you look at your notes for week one, you'll see some examples in those notes, and that includes by, macro and micro. Again, no space between the prefix and the dash. You actually, with armed with some of this information and the meaning of a few prefixes, suffixes, and word roots can begin to define medical words. Obviously, it's easy to pick up a dictionary or look online. You can Google online just about anything and find a definition or a word meaning but sometimes you're not going to have these resources and so you need to start utilizing this procedure so that you can define medical words. You start with the suffix or the last part of the word first. 
The next part that you go to is the beginning of the word. And again, that could be a prefix, but not always will you have a prefix in a word, so it could be the word root. And then finally, you define the middle part of the word. So again, you go to the last part of the word, then the first part of the word, and then the middle part of the word. An example is the word macrocardia. Define the suffix first, that's ia, and that means condition. Then go to the beginning of the word, macro, which is a prefix, and it means large. And then you go to the word root, card. Put it together, you get the definition for macrocardia, a condition of a large heart. Sometimes your definitions have to be refined, and if you went to a dictionary, you could locate the definition and you might see something like this, enlarged heart. But what about building medical words? You have some rules, that is three rules for building medical words. And those are found in your notes. And if you want to read along with me or just listen, that's fine. Um, the rules are that a word root links a suffix that begins with a vowel. So if you've got a word root and then you've got a suffix, if the suffix begins with a vowel, you don't have a combining form. It's simply the word root plus the suffix. The next thing that you need to consider is when you have a suffix that begins with a consonant. You're going to have your word root plus a combining vowel, otherwise known as a combining form, linking to that suffix. And also sometimes you'll have two word roots. Put those together and you have a compound word. When you have a compound medical word, you link them together with a combining vowel. Sometimes um, you'll also um, see compound words in your daily life. And examples of those are baseball, football, chalkboard, and think about that. Um, for those compound words, you're just putting two words together. You don't see in those words a combining vowel. But in medical terminology, you do have to use that combining vowel. And when you look at the example osteoarthritis, which means inflammation of bone and joints, um, you, you actually have a combining vowel between those two word roots, even though one of the word roots starts with a vowel. You've got to have a combining vowel in there to join those together. So with that said, um, I'm going to go ahead and stop recording here in just a second, and uh, this should for you go right along with the notes for week one and the next video that you'll watch with my voice and another avatar, because I'm going to use another avatar next time, uh, will be for week two notes.